What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome back to the channel. And today we have some exciting news for all the Linux enthusiasts out there. And that's that Debian 12 bookworm, the latest release from the iconic Debian project is finally here. And in this video, we'll explore the new features and improvements of Debian 12. And I'll also guide you through the installation process so you can experience it firsthand. So let's go down and get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is bring up Debian's website. And of course, I always had a link down in the description of the video, but it's Debian.org. And you guys will be able to go down in the description and click the link so that will take you to it. But Debian 12 Bookworm is a major release that brings a host of new features and updates to the table. And it's known for its stability, predictability, and reliability, which are characteristics that have made Debian a foundation for other popular distributions like Ubuntu. Now let's take a closer look at the website. I just wanted to show you guys how to download it mainly, but you can get a lot of information. It's, it's a big community around Debian, you know what I'm saying? And and this is why almost every Linux YouTuber out there has probably already covered this release. I know I've seen DT, he's got one out uh, as well as Tech Hut. I think I've seen him do a video on it as well. And I'm always behind. I don't always like to cover the distributions right when they come out. I always tend to wait, you know, and then catch it when I actually get to it, to be honest. But in order to download it, all we have to do is hit download. They'll take you to that latest release. As you can see, this is Debian 12 codename Bookworm. And so all you got to do is click the ISO, download it. They also have the SHA-512 uh, sum, you know, the signature. So you can download it and check to verify that you're getting it from the right source. And if you're installing this on hardware, then you want to use some type of writer and just write it to the ISO. And then you should be able to boot up, you know, directly from that ISO on your hardware. And just a little bit more information, they do have an installation guide, so you can go down here, you know, check this out. That'll walk you through how to actually get it installed. But yeah, they have a lot of great information there. Uh, you could check out their blog. They also have a news page. And just to get some information about the operating system, if you need it. And as you can see, this is the project news down below. So these are all the releases and this it was released on June 10th so I'm only about six days behind of everybody else trying it out as soon as it came out but if you want to check that out that has all the release notes you know what I'm saying so and they say they've been working on this for you know a year nine months 28 days of development for this uh release and one of the no notable improvements in this you know latest release is the update to the Linux kernel it comes with the long-term supported Linux 6.1 LTS kernel series, which brings enhanced hardware support and updated drivers for modern devices. And this ensures a seamless experience on your hardware and the kernel will be officially supported until December, 2026. Now, another thing you can see within these release notes, uh, Debian 12 introduced a nine free firmware repository and that's separate from the non-free repository which was there previously and so this allows you to easily access non-free firmware packages so if you're upgrading from debian 11 make sure to add the new non-free firmware repository to the sources list file and so that was like a very important change i wanted to point out to you guys now let's dive into the installation process and see how easy it is to get Debian 12 up and running on your system. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. 
All right, so as soon as you boot up the ISO, you'll be greeted with the installer. And the first thing you wanna do is select your language. So just hit continue on it. Uh, and I know you guys can't see it, but there are two buttons down here at the bottom. Continue, back, and then you can also take screenshots. But I'm gonna just hit continue. That'll go through and select our language. And so we hit continue there. Uh, United States for me uh, so just select your country uh, and that's basically your location and then right here is your keyboard layout so uh, mine is American English so I don't need to make any changes there so let's hit continue um, and this will load additional components uh, from the installation media so we can get the install going this is mainly to uh, set up our hard drives and all that stuff set up networking and all kind of stuff that it sets up you know in the beginning uh, it'll start off with the host name. So I'm gonna just leave it Debian. That's fine. You can name it whatever you want uh, Just so you guys know uh, Also, you can set up a domain name if you need one. I'm gonna hit next. We don't need to do that now uh, This is setting up our user uh, And password for the root account. Well, actually just a password for the root account And so you can type whatever you want in here uh, I'm gonna just type something super simple and then we can go down and type it in twice boom and then hit continue there and that's setting up our root account and then right here is setting up our user account so just type josh uh that's what i'm gonna name it and then continue that's the user account name i want to use and then let's go down and give it a password for that and this will be a pseudo account i believe i believe it sets it up as a pseudo account if not we can add it to the uh pseudo a uh, group in order to you know get pseudo uh, access i can't remember if it does it automatically or not uh now right here is just configuring your clock basically your location so i'm on pacific standard time and it does this based on you know what you select as far as your location so it's only bringing up the time zones for here in the us uh, which is what i selected so let's hit continue there uh now we're going to set up our hard disk and it basically starts up a partitioner, you know, in the background that'll basically partition the drives for you. Uh, you got a couple different options. So you could do uh, the guided that use entire disk. That's the simplest way. Uh, you won't have any LVM, which is logical volumes uh, set up on the system. You can do the use entire disk and set up uh, LVM, uh, which is those logical volumes. And then you can also encrypt it. Uh, you can use the entire disk, set up an encrypted LVM. Uh, which is going to require you to decrypt the data every time you log into it by logging into the system basically um it, it'll ask you for an encryption key you set the encryption key uh and it will ask you every time you boot up the system and that's good for like a laptop or so if you're installing debian on a laptop uh, something that can be, you know, stolen or physically moved, unlike a desktop, if you, you know, set it, set it up somewhere in your house uh, and you don't move it that often and it's not a potential that it'll be lost or something like that. You don't have to worry about it getting in someone else's hands unless your house get robbed, obviously. But this is good for like mobile devices. So a laptop. Uh, as far as the encryption LVM, uh, that way your data is encrypted. So if you lose your laptop, no one can get into it unless they know that encryption uh, password to decrypt your data. And then also you have your manual set up. You can manually partition. I'm just use a regular. I'm not going to go and use the LVM. It doesn't matter to me because uh, this distribution is going to be destroyed after this video. I'm just showing you guys how to set it up and explaining each one of the steps. And now this is where you select the actual hard drive you want to make changes to. So if you're doing this on physical hardware, you want to verify that you have a backup of whatever is on the disk that you select. So if you have multiple disks here, and let's say one of these disks have data on it, you want to make sure you uh, select the right disk. Otherwise, Debian is going to overwrite your data. So just letting you guys know, it's just like any other install. If you got more than one disk, you want to make sure you select the right disk. Otherwise, all your data will be lost. And I don't want you blaming me, keep it techie, for you losing your data. So I just wanted to highlight that. But let's go down and hit continue there. Now, this is a couple options for the home directory. Uh, you can separate it. You know, you can partition out your directories and a lot of people they'll go through and they'll separate their home for temp uh some people will just separate their home or you could put everything in one partition and essentially all you're doing is separating data into different partitions um but 
what I typically do on my main systems, a system that I'm gonna use forever, it, it, it's easier for backups and all that stuff for me, uh, is just to partition my hard drive. I mean, my home directory. And then I could just move everything from my home directory to another system, you know, easy peasy, install all the applications and be good to go. Now let's go down and hit continue. I'm gonna just use the normal, use all files and all that stuff in one partition. Uh, and then right here, finish partitioning and write changes. So just hit continue there. That'll go through and make those changes to it. And this is kind of like a warning. Okay, hey, this is your last chance. We're gonna overwrite this disk. So just so you know, that's what this is right here. You wanna hit yes, hit continue, your partition the drives, and it should install the st stored installing the, the operating system. So I'll be back when this actually finishes. This is the online uh, installer. And so it'll be downloading stuff from the web and all that good stuff uh, in order to get everything set up for you. Or what do they call it? The net installer. And so certain things will be downloaded. It's not all on the disk. I think the base operating system is on the disk or the ISO. And then the remainder of the applications will be downloaded from the web, which is what you'll do anyway once you install it. You start installing all your applications and all that stuff. Uh, so I'll be back when this actually finishes. All right, cool. So the installation is done, but there is a configuration of the package manager. Uh, as you can see, you can add a, another media source uh, that can scan for additional software to be installed on the system. I'm going to skip this. Um, there's no need to go through that. I don't have another disk. Uh, configure the package manager. So this is basically just setting up your location just to get you to the closest repos to you. Now, you United States for me, so just pick wherever you want to and then a the dev dot uh debian org it's probably your best one if you're in the same location as me otherwise you'll select a different location mirror so i'm gonna just use that one uh press continue if you want to use a proxy you can you could put that information there but i'm gonna just leave it blank and then it's gonna scan our mirrors uh go through and configure our app package manager and then it's gonna uh, retrieve packages or upgrades for the system. So I'll be back when this actually finishes because it'll it'll do some updates. It'll update basically everything uh, for your system. And that's what I meant by the net installers. You gotta configure that package manager and it's gonna start installing the software on your system. So I'll be back in a second. Ah, and so that finished pretty quick, quickly. It says configure popularity contest. Now this is something that I haven't seen before. Uh, if you choose to participate, this is the automatic submission script will run, will run once every week, sending statistics to the distribution developers. So this is a way for them to collect information or about your system. And it's mainly just to help them with development. I'm going to select no, I'm going to leave it on no. That's the default, which is good. You know, I like when things like that are turned on off by default. That way people don't just skip past it and select it. Uh, and this is only if you want to, you know, have this connect to Debian and send them information about your system. So it's going on here, continue, boom. And I'll be back when this finishes. Wow, and it's going through this stuff pretty quick. Uh, so this is where you can select your desktop environment. And this is something we saw on the Debian's website, how it ships with multiple desktop environments. So you can install whatever you want on it, um, which is super cool. So they got the GNOME. And one thing I'm gonna do is install XFCE. I like XFCE. You guys know that if you've been around the channel, um, I'm gonna install the XFCE CE desktop environment. And then you can also set up some other things like a web server or SSH server if you want to set that up on your system in case you want to connect to it. Uh, but this is going to have a desktop environment. I don't want to set it up as a server, but yeah, if you want to set it up as a server, you can turn that off easily and set it up as an SSH server. You know what I'm saying? And don't install a desktop and you know a desktop environment. I'm I'm assuming yeah you can. And then also one other thing that's set by default is the standard system utilities. You can go down and uh, put that on there. And actually, let's just select SSH. Uh, let's put that on there because it's a small application. It's not that, you know, difficult to use or it's not that big of an application, you know, for the system. So let's go down here, continue there. Uh, it'll go through, grab all the files, install them. And this time I'll be back. 
because it's going through grabbing everything and then it's going to go through the install of all those packages as you can see it's a thousand or something packages so i'll be back all right so the last thing is installing grub and all we have to do is uh just leave it on yes and hit continue and you have to select the uh device that you want to get grubbed installed on so the bootloader which is that device like i said we just set up our drive our main drive for everything you know what i'm saying uh everything is included on that one drive same partition all that good stuff so and all we have to do is specify that device so let's just hit continue there it'll install grub and it should be the last step all right cool so the that's pretty much it for the installation all we have to do is hit continue it'll go through and uh reboot the system and then i'll show you guys the desktop environment all right cool so i already logged into it and as you can see this is the base xfce desktop environment which is super awesome i won't go through the full desktop uh just showing you guys all the stuff on here because i've done that plenty of times just showing you guys xfce if you understand xfce you know then it's not that difficult to get or whatever and then also i'm not sure of what desktop environment you're going to install on the system so uh, i'll just kind of cover some base stuff like uh for instance i wanted to show you guys uh you name uh dash a and that'll show us the kernel version that's being used right now so linux debian 6.1.0 so good to go and like i told you guys in the beginning is using that lts kernel so you're good to go until 2026 i believe all right so that wraps up our overview and installation guide of debian 12 bookworm if you found this video helpful give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more linux related content also, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or if you've already tried Debian 12. So thanks for watching and of course, keep it techy.